One of the things that I realised as we were looking at this, and we've talked a lot this week about health and community and cohesion and people, but one word that hasn't had its moment in the sun is the word happiness. And happiness is so fundamental to who we are as people. It's, it's part of our well-being. And sometimes we talk a lot about happiness, um, but what I've found in Hong Kong is that actually happiness underpins everything that we've been saying. And it's reflected in all of the images and faces uh, that we've seen in this and the ambitions of the projects uh, that we're talking about today. So this is now the moment for uh, questions and answers and discussion, because these are all already very Hong Kong of having very successful projects, but I'm sure you have grand ambitions and lots more requests and ideas. DeVoe Road, you have ambitions for a space in the city and nobody can doubt the ambitions of the, the Harbour Loop. And what I want to talk about is how do we go from some of these images and this aspiration to the happiness that they reflect to the reality of making them happen because they've got very different needs and different elements as well as some, co some shared uh, opportunities. And I would like to open to the floor as well. Um, if you have questions, I'm not sure where the microphones are. It's really hard to see from, ah, great. I'm going to come and, and sit down here in a minute. So we have someone with the microphone. Um, so if you have a question, what I would ask actually just to make it easier is if you come out into the aisle in the middle of the room and the lady with the microphone, then you can join, uh, join her there with the microphone. Um, and then we can see you and, and, and take your questions. So I just got a, a couple of opening questions for the group and I'd like to, it's, it's the question of how, how do we realize some of these um, ideas and I'm going to start with Harbour Loop because you have some of the biggest ambitions and you've rightly recognized that already segments of this are, are happening but what are the things that you feel where's your inspiration for making it happen and how do you how do you see taking it forwards um, good question I think we ask ourselves those, those questions as well quite a lot um, I think the inspiration is, is quite easy. There's a lot of case studies around the world that are really fantastic in terms of how cities and waterfronts have transformed from being sort of the back of the city to the, the front, the real prime uh, asset for the city. Uh, in terms of pedestrian infrastructure, Highline is the one we always refer to. I mean, just the, looking at the, the impact that's had for the local area, for tourism, the impression people have of New York, the image, um, and also on the on the sort of economic side, I mean, there's a study that showed something like 150 million dollars invested in it, and the benefit's been over two billion dollars. So I think the the rationale's there. Um, it's just making that case for Hong Kong and Hong Kong's harbour. And I think uh, in terms of taking it forwards, um, a lot of people understand, but we want to combine efforts and maybe look at following uh, the High Line in terms of creating a foundation that can um, ultimately bring together the people and give their ownership to a, a much larger group than ourselves taking it forwards. So you're talking about creating a new body to fundraise for the idea? Yeah, fundraise, but also expertise. I mean, we're, we love the idea and we're, we're very excited about it, but we're not experts in everything. And there's, there's people here on stage who have really uh, pioneered uh, working towards much better public space in Hong Kong. I think it's those people and, and the people you've worked with that we'd like to collaborate and, and bring more of these initiatives forwards. Yeah, I think that partnership issue is very critical because we don't lack that we have the technical know-how to deliver these projects, but it's bringing that knowledge together mm. and bringing uh, the funding together as well. Did you want to say, Maggie? I can't really not say something. Um, I'm on the Harbour Front Commission. My husband's the chairman, so I can't just get away without saying anything. Um, there is quite a lot going on towards... as. Ian and others are familiar, towards trying to get an improved harbour front. This is not for lack of conviction amongst a lot of people that this is really vital, but it, it, it is much more complicated than it looks. I didn't believe so when I first joined the Commission. I've had to begin to believe it while I've been on it. We do not lack money. The government is even committed to making big improvements to the harbour front. But I'm afraid before we can get the government money that has been discussed, I don't think it's their fault necessarily, uh, that various things do need to change with our system and the way we get granted money and the way the Harbour Front Commission can work. It's only advisory at the moment, it's trying to turn itself into an authority where it can actually make these things happen. 
Uh, but that in Hong Kong at the moment takes time and effort. I won't go into it. We love some of the ideas that have come out of all Ian's and, and Lead 8's ideas, other ideas that have come to us. It would be great if we could put a lot of them into happening now. But I'm afraid it is going to take a bit of time. Equally, infrastructure is still impacting on us. We haven't even got full access to or ownership of the whole harbour front yet because of underground things and bypasses and other things that need railway stations and railway under tunnels that still need to be completed. So hopefully in the next few years there will be great improvement. And by the way, the bridge over the Narrows, I had first put it forward 10 years ago. I would love to see it happen. Okay, so there are some ownership issues, which is interesting, and you suggest there's even regulation or some rules, um, some authority that needs to come in, um, and which is why we need these visions, because we need the idea to start bringing all of these different elements together um, to make them point in the right direction and, and channel that energy and focus that, uh, that energy. Um, I'd like to now talk to uh, Marcus about DeVoe Road because we have a different idea here, which is this is existing infrastructure. It's already a street. People walk up and down it, cars drive up and down it. Um, it gets quite heavily polluted at times. It's iconic, double-decker trams. Um, but the film you played at the beginning, which is the happiness of using that space differently. And, and, and how do you see taking that idea forwards because in fact not many people can argue with turning the city towards the harbour front but I suspect you'd get a, a few more arguments about taking the cars out of Devoe Road. Devoe well, Road Central. Yeah, This is a very long running campaign uh, and I have friends uh, some of whom are in the audience who have been working on this for for many many years. I have the advantage of coming to this fresh so I'm not jaded by the fact that it's you know, taken such a long time. Um, I'm actually very optimistic that this is going to happen. Uh, I think there are a lot of stars sort of aligning to make this idea, uh, you know, that the, 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 the moment has come for this idea. The uh, property owners along that strip are generally supportive, those who have, we have spoken to, and can see the potential of pedestrianization. Um, I think the, the man in the street is uh, generally very much behind the idea, um, ignoring the politics for the moment. You know, uh, Occupy Central was a good trial run because um, it, it, it was uh, an example of how streets could be used by workers during their lunch breaks uh, to uh, amble along, uh, look at artwork, uh, look at some of the events that were taking place, um, and, and just to really enjoy a quiet moment in the streets of Hong Kong. Um, then there is, I think, good government support for it as well. Um, we've had good signals uh, from, from the high levels of government that, uh, that this is a good idea and uh, that, that um, you know, it, it, it could happen. But, yeah, the, uh, there are always roadblocks along the way. I mean, recently, for example, I, I, I spoke briefly about this uh, uh, very DVRC event that took place a couple of weeks ago with the help of uh, um, uh, uh, the very, very Hong Kong group and um, we had spent hours in coordination meetings with various government departments in the weeks and months leading up to this event uh, which included the police and uh, at the very last moment uh, leaving us really two working days uh, before the event the, po the police at a very high level said oh we're only going to give you 50 meters Right, um, and it took a lot of string pulling and arm twisting to finally get them to agree to give us 200 meters. Now the original idea of course was to close off the whole of the street. So no matter how much high level support you get, and uh, you know, Anthony Chung from the Transport Bureau said uh, we're very supportive, we'll, we'll get uh, all the, the various departments involved behind this idea. You know, at the last moment, uh, you know, there, there was a spanner in the works, and, and this is this is the problem with uh, non-joined-up government. Uh, 
Great. I'm, I'm going to go to questions with the audience um, and come back to you in a minute. Has, uh, has someone got a, a question for our panel? Down here. Thank you. Do you want to stand up um, and tell us who you are? Um, Gladys Lee, and I think um, I'm known to some of the panelists, um, a member of the Board of Civic Exchange. Um, we've had really a wonderful few days. Um, I've attended a number of sessions, um, had heard from some government officials about development of new towns, including one that is still on the drawing board, um, which looks lovely in the pictures, uh, but what is absent it, from the pictures are people. Um, uh, and they're talking about creating a wonderful riverside promenade, no people. They suddenly recognize that they want the promenade to be vibrant. You need people to make it vibrant, right? And we have quite a lot of dead space in the city, which is not used and not usable. And we have to ask ourselves why those spaces are not used or not usable. And, and very often, I mean, even if you go to the parks, what are the things that you cannot do in the parks, right? So if you want people to come, you have to lessen the number of restrictions. And I think if you lessen the number of restrictions, people will make use and they will learn how to make use and this will grow organically. So if you want the people to come, one of the first things I would suggest we need to do is to lessen the restrictions. Great, thank you. I might use that as the perfect segue to Very Hong Kong because you have found how to untie some of those restrictions and use some of those spaces that haven't traditionally been open to the public in Hong Kong. Yes, we've actually had to identify our spaces quite uh, carefully be, uh, and, and be realistic because we wanted to have some of these events happen. But I couldn't agree more with the, we've got to make and loosen up the how you use things and the management of our open space generally. I think there's a lot of people who understand this. Um, the government department that normally has to take on the management and operation of these things is very much limited by a very difficult ordinance. It needs changing. There needs a lot of new thought to go into how the city is managed and how we operate in these spaces. It's one of the reasons we want a harbour front authority, then we can have our own management team. However, it, this all takes time and getting ordinances changed, as people who live here know, is very difficult. But it, it, it does need to happen. Very Hong Kong tries to make our space as flexible as we possibly can so that people can use it to the best advantage and use it how they would enjoy it. And that includes kids and it includes the older, older people and they all seem to manage very well. I can't see what the real issue is. Um, Gladys, thank you. I, I think a uh, very good point. Um, if you go to, in, into a public park today, there are a whole list of prohibitions of what you can't do. Uh, the, the last one of which says, no fun. You know? <laughs> um, and you know, if you leave it up to the people to determine how best to use the space. They are, they are actually the best people to determine, to make that determination. Uh, one good example is Cyber Park, which is very near where I live. You know, people go down there in the evenings. It's just, it is actually an open space of, of grassland, but uh, all sorts of activities are taking place down there, including a lot of dog-related activities. Um, you know, I, I come back again to Occupy Central, which, uh, which was totally unregulated, if you like. Uh, you know, people complain constantly about how uh, uh, boring our youth are today and how, uh, you know, what, what, what a lack of creativity we have in Hong Kong. Well, you know, Occupy Central was the absolute uh, answer to that. It was an explosion of creativity um, and a, a wonderful example of street theatre, really, uh, of street theatre. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I agree with you. I, th I think uh, the problem is that uh, 
the government still sees us as sheeple <laughs> and not and as people. So perhaps we need to ask and, them. And, and, and uh, that we need regulating. They don't trust us enough. So perhaps we need to have a little more faith in our own humanity and in the spirit of, of young people. Does anyone else have a very um, urgent question? Because as seems to be the way, um, we are almost, we are out of time. And my screen is flashing. Um, but we do have one, one question here and then I'll just make a short summary. Hi, Nigel Redding, the Census Architecture Design. Um, I have an observation and a brief suggestion. Please be brief. I will be as succinct as I can. The observation is that Hong Kong is a natural amphitheater both in terms of its geology and its architecture. It's a, it's a theater in the round. And uh, I, I believe that Harbour Loop is a wonderful stage. And uh, the, the potential synergies with uh, very Hong Kong, with where you have pop-up, spontaneous, Occupy-like um, cultural events are immense. Uh, there, there's fantastic possibilities uh, coming out of the Harbour Loop uh, idea and also very Hong Kong, and I, I strongly advise, if you're not already, that you, you uh, uh, or actually also with uh, Devere Road, that you liaise a, a very closely together, um, a united front for a, for a, 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 a very successful um, Hong Kong civic realm. Um, the suggestion is that in terms of the larger theatre of the, the global uh, climate um, scenario that we're dealing with, after Paris COP21, we know that we have to go, for example, for complete uh, decarbonization of transport by 2050, just as an example from Monday. Um, perhaps one way that uh, uh, Harbour Loop and schemes like that uh, could achieve that is uh, to have all of the public realm aspects of Harbour Loop um, renewables powered so that we, we start to um, pilot project areas of public realm, areas of zero carbon transport that are renewables powered, that are phasing out fossil fuels. And so we begin to incrementally build a consensus um, for how Hong Kong can begin to decarbonize as a city. Of course, that means bringing together scheme of control issues, government issues, um, MTR perhaps as ideal operators, all kinds of uh, fascinating challenges for us to move forward uh, with. But uh, I, I think that uh, we can really uh, leverage the sort of uh, um, ideas that we've been seeing this afternoon to the bigger picture of decarbonizing Hong Kong as well. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I almost don't need to make a summary statement. I think you almost did it for me. <laughs> I would just like to close the session with a couple of um, key ideas. And I would like to come back and start with the idea of happiness because it is, it is fundamental to what we're, we're trying to achieve, the carbon agenda. And we know how to do these projects, but we know that there are challenges. And some of the elements we've picked up today is, and, and I'd like to highlight, is the need for fresh talent. I think, Marcus, bringing in new people, bringing in that energy to keep the momentum, to sustain the energy required to see through the G state, the, the, the undoing of the regulations, the loosening of the restrictions, the, sh the, the growing of ownership and authority to actually bring about these changes, building the partnerships. And what I haven't heard here, which is always a joy, is that money is not the barrier. So let's not, <laughs> let's not, throw it out, you know, all together. But it's been great to talk about everything but the money. I, I need money. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think this session shows that we are still in the business of creating public space and we're, we're growing the joy of how we use that public space and discover it both uh, for the young and the old people and for everyone in Hong Kong. I'd like to, you to join me in thanking our speakers um, for sharing their big ideas and their fantastic contribution to walkability in Hong Kong. <laughs>